Okay, so I've been watching a lot of videos lately about the housing affordability crisis and how house prices are just going up exponentially while wages are staying fairly flat or not going up at all. Uh, and there's something that no one's talking about. And I've watched dozens of videos uh, predicting a crash is coming and about why, why there's affordability problems and all that sort of thing. And there's one thing that no one, no one has mentioned anywhere, not, not on the news, not in the TV, not in the newspapers, not on other videos, not on websites. No one's talking about it at all. So that's what I'm going to tell you about in this video. But first, I'm going to tell you about my story, a little bit about my story, just a quick summary of how I got into, how I found out about this. Okay. So um, I've got six acres, or I, I had six acres of land uh, with a little house on it. And it was a long way from the nearest capital city. We're, we're talking about Brisbane, the nearest capital city, was well over seven hours drive away. Okay, so a long way from a capital city. Um, it was zone rural. My well, six acres of land was zone rural. It had a little farmhouse on it, little, little, little uh, modest farmhouse. And uh, it had um, farmland on two sides. Okay, so two sides of the four acre, square four acre block or rectangular block was farmland. And the other two sides was residential houses. So it was sort of on the edge of a residential area. Okay. And I lived there in peace with my dogs and chooks and horses and fruit trees. And it was absolutely lovely. I love living there. And uh, I was there for quite a long time. Okay. So that's, that's what I had. And here's a quick diagram to show you what I mean. So that, that's my six acre block there, the green one. And there were houses across the road. Okay. And, and quite a busy road. Uh, at the front, and then down the, side, down the side here, there was a little skinny road with houses here and houses there as well. So there's like two layers of houses here between this road and this road. So these houses here went onto that road, and these houses here went onto that road. So that was my sort of situation there. So, um, and it was right on the middle, uh, right on the edge, like I say, of a of a of a residential area, which was only for a little town anyway. So we're talking about a little town out in the country. Okay, uh, so fast forward 15 years and council had changed my land zoning from rural to residential. They did write to me and tell me they were planning to do it and I could object, but I thought, hey, if they want to change my land to residential, that's fine with me. <laughs> okay, it saves me doing it if I wanted to do it. And, um, you know, and I was always keeping an eye out for maybe, maybe it's going to be, this, this land's going to be subdivided one day. It's got to be. Okay. Because uh, it's on the land of, on, on the edge of two subdivisions, so it's going to be subdivided one day. So I thought, hey, if you want to change my land to residential, that's fine with me. And uh, pretty soon after that happened, the land around me, the farmland around me, became residential as, as well. And they started subdividing like crazy. They built houses and house blocks, and there was houses houses all around me, or, or vacant house blocks all around me. And then the council started leaning on me. For things about having long grass anywhere on my six acres if there's any long grass as well as that um council suddenly said to me because it's residential you can't keep horses chooks or goats anymore i could keep a, i could keep three or four chooks but i had like you know 30 chooks or, or something like that and no no roosters so all of a sudden they put restrictions on me about what animals i could keep no horses no goats definitely no, no horses no goats and maximum four chooks Okay, uh, even though I still had the whole six acre block. <laughs> uh, and they said a maximum of two dogs, and I had more than two dogs. I love my doggies. And they said maximum two dogs. And also, so all of a sudden I had to pay dog registration fees. When you live on rural, rural land in Australia, you don't have to pay your dog registrations because the dogs are way out in the country. All of a sudden I had to pay my dog registrations. It's a small point, but the council just started harping on about things. All of a sudden, they were on my doorstep every second week. That that vegetation down the back there is a bit overgrown. We want you to mow it. Those trees down there are a bit a bit thick together. We want you to clear all that out, okay? Uh, and I guess neighbours around the, around the property too were maybe putting in complaints um, about vegetation and things. So I was having to do a whole lot of extra work all of a sudden to uh, to maintain my land. And there were other restrictions as well. The council got onto me about sheds that were too close to the neighbour. Or sheds that were maybe a bit ugly, you know, they, they started picking on all sorts of things and, and threatening me with fines. So I thought, uh, you know, is it, is it time to subdivide? 
maybe it's time to subdivide and uh, and and move away <laughs> because my rural land had changed to residential and the feel of it had changed as well because all of a sudden the council was on my doorstep picking on me about all these things you know you've got too many you've got a rooster you can't have roosters you can't have your goats and your chooks anymore and your, and your horses keep that vegetation down the back there mode and all that you know they started picking on me it was it was crazy and uh, of course, I don't like that. It's my land. I can do what I like on my land, and I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not creating pollution. I'm not starting fires. I'm not, you know, polluting the land or destroying the land. I'm just living there in peace. And the council wouldn't let me do that anymore. So I thought maybe it's time to subdivide. Okay. So I talked to the council and talked to the town planner. I had several meetings, and we explored options, or I explored options, and I also talked to surveyors and things as well. Um, and I decided that the best option was to maintain the status quo when I subdivided my land. I was going to keep the same size blocks as what was all around it. I wasn't going to go big or small. Uh, I was just going to keep the same size so everything was all straightforward and, and, and blended in with the neighbours. The council quoted me $160,000 to $180,000 per block. Did you hear me? Per block. Okay, when they quoted that price originally, they said 160 to 180,000. I thought that meant for all of the blocks, but it was per block. So for my 24 blocks, 24 quarter acre blocks, make six acres, it was going to cost me $4.3 million in subdivision fees, in council fees alone. Okay, that excluded the cost of clearing and leveling the land, the bitumen road that I had to put through the middle. Okay, so to do the subdivision, I had to put a bitumen road through the middle so I could get houses both sides of the road like, a, like was on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, it excluded the cost of streetlights. It excluded the cost of curb and channel guttering and all sorts of other costs it excluded. Survey fees and who knows what else. Okay, so I estimated that all of these things maybe could cost an extra 40 grand per block, maybe more. Who knows? I, I had no idea. Okay, so all of a sudden I was looking at a minimum of $5.3 million in council fees alone, or yeah, well, in, in council fees plus costs, to subdivide my my um, my 24 blocks. Okay. Now, I could have sold each block maybe for about 300K. So I could have made maybe 80K profit per block. It depends on how accurate this figure here is. I could have made a profit of 80K per block if that figure there was accurate. But I wasn't sure. And I wasn't going to I wasn't going to go to the bank and, and borrow 5.3 million dollars. No, thank you. I, I don't want to be in debt. I, I, I don't want to be in debt at all. Okay. I like I like having no debt. You know, live in live in a basic little house, tear up your credit cards and live within your means. And that's the way I reckon you should live. No debt. <laughs> so I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to borrow 5.3 million dollars. No way. So I so I sold the block. Okay. I sold my six acres, and uh, I got a very small fraction. You know, of, of this money here, got way under a million dollars my block because whoever bought it was going to have to pay these fees. Okay, so um, I got uh, you know, way, 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 way less than a million dollars for my, for my, for my land. <clears throat> so the moral of the story, what's the moral of the story? Well, it's not just greedy landowners. Everybody always picks on the landlords and the landowners. It's not just greedy landlords and landowners. <laughs> they're getting squeezed like crazy with rates and insurance and all sorts of things. All their costs are going through the roof. It's not just greedy developers whose costs are also going through the roof. Uh, it's not just greedy builders and the cost of all building materials and wages are all going through the roof. Okay. The, the, the subcontractors all want more money and more money. Um, it's not just greedy banks. It's also very greedy local councils and local governments. They charge a fortune in fees and costs for, for, for just about everything you want to do. <laughs> okay, It's not just rates they charge a fortune for. It's everything you can imagine. Sewerage connections, water connections, subdivision fees, you know, and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, so keep that in mind. Before you go and demonise the landlords or the builders, think about your local council. How much have they charged that poor person who's, who's ended up for their eyeballs to do your subdivision where you're buying your land and your house. You know, it's not just if you're if you're buying your land and house for a million dollars, the builder's not making a million dollars. 
the developers aren't making a million dollars you know on that house they, they, they may be making 50 or twenty thousand dollars know. so keep that in mind before you go blaming people it's also the, the very greedy the very very greedy local councils and governments and given that every council I know is in massive debt my local council here is in massive debt up to their eyeballs maybe it's time to shine a light on what councils are doing and where they're spending money Where's the money going, folks? You know, there's very little accountability and transparency. It's time to shine a light on it and see what's going on. Anyway, that's my two cents worth. I just thought I'd share my story uh, to um, talk about something that nobody else is talking about. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope the video was useful. Have a nice day and good luck. Good luck with your house hunting. <laughs>